Hey YouTube, John here, back down on the bench, and today we're going to be adding telemetry to the Cheerson CX-20. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with telemetry, basically what it is, is it adds a wireless connection between your quadcopter and whatever you're using for a ground station. In my case, a Windows-based laptop. And what this does, is this allows you to take advantage of all the features of Mission Planner wirelessly while the vehicle's in flight. So just a really cool accessory to add to the Cheerson CX-20. So just a quick disclaimer before we get started. Um, obviously just keep in mind that anytime you modify any kind of quadcopter, transmitter, anything like that, um, you're risking doing unrepairable damage that's not gonna be covered under warranty. So just keep that in mind and proceed at your own risk. Uh, and second, I wanna cover what flight board is in this and what firmware is in it because everything that I'm gonna discuss today is based off of that firmware and flight board version only. Um, from what I understand, if you change the firmware, there's a hex file you have to add to get everything up and running. And I'll leave a link to a video down below that helped me a lot with this setup, and it will also help anyone with an updated firmware. So what I'm running in this is the APM um, 252 board version 5.0, and firmware is Arducopter 3.1.2. So basically, this is a bone stock Cheerson CX-20 how I got it from GearBest.com. Now the telemetry kit that I'm gonna be using for this project is this 3D robotics kit that I bought on eBay. Um, cost me like $20 shipped, so it's super cheap. Comes with two antennas. It comes with the ground radio. Comes with the air radio, which mounts to the quadcopter, and various lengths of wire here with different connectors on the end of them. And really, the only thing I'm gonna to add to it is this short section of coax cable with this bulkhead connector so I can mount the radio inside the quadcopter and then screw the bulkhead connector through the body and mount the antenna externally. That's optional. I mean, you can always just use like Velcro and stick this to the bottom of the quadcopter, but I'm gonna, my plan is to put a gimbal on it, so I wanna make sure I have plenty of room on the exterior of the quadcopter. So the first thing we're gonna do is move this stuff out of the way and we're gonna prepare the harness for the quadcopter itself. So I'm gonna mount mine internally, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up this box, because I'm not gonna use it. There you go. We have our board in here, and you can see if we flip the board over, there we go, it actually shows you the pinouts for the connector here. And that's important because we need to make sure that our wires are going to the right spot. If you reverse the RX and TX wires, it's not gonna be a big deal. But if you reverse the ground and the 5 volts, there's going to be problems. You're going to wind up frying something. Hopefully it'll be this. Worst case scenario, it's the main board and the quadcopter. So regardless, you just don't want to do it. And what we're going to do is there's various lengths of wire here that came with it. Uh, my initial plan was to take this long wire and use it because I was going to mount it externally. And this came with this little pigtail hanging off it. So I just kind of cut it off and then ran some electrical tape around it. Um, but now that my plan is to mount it inside the quadcopter, I'm gonna go ahead and use this shorter section of wire. And this one has the two longer connectors on it. Let me focus that in a little bit. That's the connector that would mount to the telemetry box, um, where this is the connector that would mount, uh, plug into the quadcopter. So I'm gonna transfer this connector to this harness making sure that my wires are in the proper position. So what I'll do now before I go any further is I'm gonna put a picture up of the CX-20's control board with a uh, pinout diagram so you know exactly where the wires need to go. So what you're gonna do is use this right here, this pinout, with the pinout I'm gonna provide right now and make sure that your wires are plugged into the correct spots. So I'll put that up right here. So now we know where the wires have to go on the quadcopter end. We're going to use that diagram and this pinout list right here that goes on that comes with your um, receiver. And we're going to go ahead and transfer the this connector onto this harness. And the easiest way to do that is if you didn't mean to bump the camera there. If you look at this connector, and you can see these little latches right here. There's a little latch over every terminal. 
And if you take a small pin or a pick and just get under it and raise it up slightly and pull the wire, we gotta get started, the wire will come right out. And then at that point, you can just take the wire from the other harness, making sure that this little this little notch right here is pointing up so it locks into the latch and just push it right up into place and you'll hear it click when it seats or you'll feel it click at least and there we go it's in so just do that for every wire again just triple check your work make sure all your pins are in the right spots and we'll be ready to take the quadcopter apart. Okay, so our harness is prepped. Looks a lot cleaner. And we're ready to go ahead, open up the Cheerson CX-20 and get this thing mounted inside. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to work. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove the top shell. That's gonna involve removing four screws from each arm, removing the props, pulling the puck cover off and unplugging the compass module. And then finally, don't forget there's one last screw. It's a Phillips head up inside the battery tray. Once you've removed those, the cover just simply pulls right off. All right, now that we're inside the CX-20, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is unplug the USB connector from our flight controller, move that out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and cut the zip tie that holds the lid on. Now this doesn't actually hold the flight controller down. The flight controller is uh, double-sided tape down but this zip tie is important because it keeps this cap on we're gonna want to just pop the cap off here there we go just like that and this little piece of foam right here we're gonna want to make sure that goes back in because what that does we'll pull it off here that covers the barometer which is right here so that's what senses the altitude and any kind of air currents that's going through the controller here that goes across that barometer is gonna skew the readings. So you wanna make sure this little piece of foam goes in right back where it came from. Now we'll just raise our control board out of the housing. And we'll see this connector right here. It's labeled UART on the bottom of the board. That's where we're gonna plug our telemetry harness into. So we'll just take our telemetry harness and just gently plug it in. You want to be careful, um, it's a little snug to plug it in there, but you want to make sure you support the back side of the connector on the board because it's only soldered on there at a right angle and it would be really easy to tear this thing off the board. So... Once you're happy that it's seated all the way down, we can go ahead and put this back together. And what I'm gonna do is just fold this harness, see if I get this in the shot, sorry, under like that, and then run the wires right out the front with the rest of the wires. So we should be able to set that back down like so. Our telemetry wires are hanging out the front. Make sure the board is sat down squarely in its housing. You don't want this cocked. You don't want it to, to come loose at all. You want to make sure it's seated properly. Take our piece of foam. Put it back where it came from. And then just set your lid right back on it, snap it back into place. And now we can, you're not gonna need your USB jack, but you know, for troubleshooting purposes, it's definitely not a bad idea to just plug it back in. You know, just to make sure you have that secondary option in case your telemetry unit doesn't work like it's supposed to. And now all we're gonna do is just take another tie wrap, run it underneath, Again, this doesn't necessarily hold the board in, it just holds the cover on the board case. So if this cover did come off, um, we would definitely have issues. 
you know, the board would come out. So you just want to make sure your tie wrap goes back on there. And we'll just cut off the rest, the uh, tail there. And we'll go ahead now and we will mount the telemetry board to the quadcopter. So my plan is to have the antenna mount somewhere around right here on the quadcopter. So what we're gonna have to do is drill a hole through the body right here. So what we'll do first is just take a look at where we're gonna drill. And you can see that we have a little ridge here and we're not gonna wanna have our bulkhead connector you know, half sitting on that ridge and half sitting off of it because it's just not gonna tighten down straight. So we'll just kind of eyeball where we're gonna drill that, make sure there's no electronics in our way. And we'll take our drill bit here. And we will go ahead and drill a hole right about there. Again, just making sure that you're not gonna drill through any electronics. Now that the hole's drilled for the bulkhead connector, we'll just take our coax, and I'm gonna run it under the board here. We'll just feed it right through. Right over to the hole. Just like that, we're in. And it'll mount just like so. So we'll go ahead, take the nut, use this washer here and we'll set this nut on there make sure as we're tightening it down we're not putting any unneeded pressure on any parts and we'll just go ahead and snug this thing down now you can see we've got the uh, telemetry radio hooked up to our coax. We've got it plugged into the quad. And now would be a good time to just test it and make sure it works. Um, just to make sure our wiring's correct. So we'll go ahead and plug the quadcopter in. And you can see that we have a slow blinking blue light and a quick blinking red light. And that's a good indication that everything's wired right and the telemetry unit's powered up the way it's supposed to be. Now that we're comfortable with that, we'll go ahead, take our double-sided tape, stick it on the back side, and mount it down inside the body. So now you can see I've just taken some 3M double-sided tape and I've actually doubled it up because there's some molded plastic pieces in here that were kind of interfering with our um, coax cable. So just to give us a little more space. And I'm just gonna peel it off here. Like so. And this is going to be tricky to get this in here without sticking it where I don't want it. So we'll just work this thing in. Get it past these power wires. There we go. And then just get it down inside where we want it. And just stick it down. And that's it. Our radio is mounted. And you can see I kind of had to give it a little downward angle just to clear this little tab um, that was hanging off and interfering with the coax cable. But it's mounted securely and our coax cable runs up behind the battery. It won't interfere with the battery. It goes out right here and we can mount our antenna right on the side of the quadcopter. So once we're sure that nothing, you know, none of our wires will interfere with anything, we can go ahead, stick the top cover back on. We'll get the software loaded into our laptop and we'll test it out. So hang tight. All right, so now that the hardware end's done on the quadcopter itself, uh, you're gonna need to go to the Silicon Labs website and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below and download the appropriate drivers for your uh, computer. And I'm running Windows 7, so I'm going to download this version right here. And I'm gonna open that. Malware bytes. Sorry about that. So 
So I'll open this, and we have two installers based on which version of Windows we have. I'm running the 64 bit. Extract all. And basically, we're just going to walk us through installing the drivers. So now that it's extracted, we'll select our version of Windows. Hit run. Accept. We'll run that. And it says it's ready to use. So now if we close all of this, I'm going to plug our ground radio into the just any USB port on the on my laptop. And we should be connected. All right, so now that everything's hooked up, the only thing we have left to do is test it. And you can see I've just got the antenna sticking out the right side of the quad right now. I've got the quad powered up and just kind of laid the cover back on it for testing. And we'll go over to our laptop and plug in our ground telemetry unit. And we're going to go up to the COM port and see which COM port we're in. And you can see under COM port 8, we have the Silicon Lab CP210X USB. That's our ground radio. We're going to click that. And we're going to make sure that our baud rate is set to 57600. Once that is confirmed, we are going to go ahead and press connect. And you can see we're connecting right now. It's gathering the parameters. And now that it's done connecting, it's asking us if we want to upload the firmware. Um, do not upload the firmware. It's going to ask you when you load this, don't do it. Um, because if you have the CX-20, as far as I know, it won't run off the standard Arducopter firmware. It may, it may not. I'm not sure. I know there's custom firmwares out there in the forums. So right now, I'm at version 3.1.2, and I'm going to stay there for the time being. So we'll just close that, and... You can see we now have live telemetry. Everything's working great. So now that we know everything works in the bench, obviously we have no GPS fix because we're down in my basement. But now that we know that everything works in the bench, just have to test it outside. And um, that's about it. So I hope this video was helpful to someone. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.